Hey everybody, we're getting into wiring our bus. Now we are choosing to use uh, Romex. So this is a solid core wire. Some people choose to use marine tin stranded wire. Uh, there's a debate on this because people think, oh, it's gonna be bouncing around in a bus, that it has the possibility to break. Um, we, when we were looking at brand new coaches, not to purchase, but just looking how they were built and doing our research, the majority of them, even the $2 million one sitting on the lot, was wired with Romex. My thinking in my decision is we are going to have everything nice and tight. It should not be bouncing around. And this is what we're choosing to use. In the possibility that maybe it does break, whatever, we'll switch, but I highly doubt that. So anyways, this called Romex has a little plastic jacket around the outside of it and that is to protect so I can kind of show you here right so this is the little this little plastic jacket it's real thin not much protection now this is traditionally meant to be used inside of a wall there's really not anything going on inside your walls so there's really no read no need to have any more than that it's also pretty waterproof inside your walls, right? You shouldn't have water damage inside of your walls. So therefore this stuff doesn't necessarily need to be super water resistant inside of here. So this wire that we're, that I'm holding right here, this is called 14-2. So we have a 14 gauge wire and it's a two conductor and it happens to have a ground. So we have our neutral, our hot and our ground. And there's also a little tiny paper insulator inside of here. And how do we protect this? So we are going to use this stuff. So this is pretty normal south wire. Uh, yeah, it's called a liquid tight flexible metal conduit, LFMC, as it's referred to. There is a metal exterior, so you can kind of see the exterior there so it kind of spirals around here and this this is I can't squish it um, if you were to try and put a, na a nail or a screw into here it would probably deflect off of here and go to the sides or it would be pushed out of the way um, so this is what we choose to this is what we're going to protect all of our wires now there's other ways to do this to protect your wires there is traditional PVC so I have some right here just to show you guys. So this is PVC, it's referred to as Schedule 40, rigid, right? Non-metallic conduit. And this is traditionally used if it's going underground, if there's water, anything like that. This stuff is used same, but it's flexible. And it's going to be nice for us because like you can kind of see right here where we have our hole, we're going to go down, we're gonna to have to drop. We have a couple bends that we have to accommodate for here and we wanna stay nice and tight. Now we watch some other YouTubers and some other builds and etc. And one thing that I've noticed and you know, they have, they have good reasons for it and I applaud those, but down here in the bays where we're going to be in and out and we're going to be grabbing things we're going to be grabbing you know a folding chair a picnic table etc you can kind of see this is the this is the stock mci wiring harness right here this is for the light system and some other stuff um you know they're nice and tight up out of the way zip tied there's a plastic uh shield around it and this is to protect the wiring harness inside. You don't want to have, this is my thinking, you know, in automotive and boats and all that, especially in boats, you know, like you're, you're grabbing an anchor and the last thing you want to do is snag a wire and pull on it and possibly break it. This normal Romex, even the plastic jacket on a marine stranded wire is not meant to be snagged by metal or pulled on or bent or anything like that. It just doesn't have the protection. I understand why they're doing it. You know, it's, it's in the case, if something were to go wrong, it's easily accessible, etc. But unfortunately, when you are dealing with safety 
and you're dealing with the possibility of electrocution and you're dealing with the possibility of fire, you have to do things the safe way and the right way. There are codes for this stuff. Now, we're technically doing an RV. You know, it's a little wishy-washy on how you're gonna do it, but I have kids, I have a wife, I have myself, I have other people who are going to be around me. I don't want to ruin all of that because a wire got snagged and caught fire or electrocuted and hurt somebody. Now we're normally, we're just doing 110. We do not have 220, um, but a 110, 20 amp, that's gonna get you, you know? Like it, it's not gonna be a fun time. So we're putting ours in conduit to protect it and uh, to be safe. So when you're putting things in conduit, one of the things about wiring is the gauge of wire is rated for a particular voltage and amp load. Now, the thing is, is when you run a load through a wire, it gets warm. It might only get a little bit warm, but it will get warm. If you run your vacuum cleaner all day and you vacuum your house, Go and feel the cord. That cord will be warm. The rating and the uh, materials used in that wire are rated in such a way not only to carry the load, but they are meant to dissipate heat. Now, when you run wire through a conduit, this adds or restricts the ability to get rid of that heat. So some of you are going to ask or wonder why I'm doing this, but when you run wire through conduit, you can remove the outer insulation. Why? Because this is meant to protect it, but this protects way better. So I'm just stripping this guy off. This is going to help deal. There's also, uh, I'll post a chart here. There is also a chart based on the gauge of wire and the size of the conduit, how many you can run in here. Now that's not so that, you know, Joe Bob goes and smushes a big, you know, another run of wire and it's too hard for him. Uh, that chart is to code because of the ability of those wires in that grouping, in this size conduit, etc., the ability to dissipate that heat. Stay safe, do things the right way, follow codes, and uh, you'll have a good time. All right, so I'm just gonna pull this guy back and I'm gonna push him up in there until he pops out the other end. I'm gonna leave myself, I don't know, maybe about 10 inches on each side. And then I'm gonna throw it up into the bus. I'm gonna wire it to the receptacle. And this side, uh, we're gonna leave loose until we get our panel in. Um, I have some fittings that go on this guy that are gonna go into the breaker panel. And then this guy, the neutral will go to the neutral bus. The ground will go to the ground bus and the hot will go to the breaker. I will show that in a bit once I get to that point. Thanks everybody. So we're doing more wiring. These are all the 110 circuits of the bus. We've got outlets, TV, the yellow and the orange are both uh, 20 amps. So these are 12 twos. And then we have outlets and the back room. All of this comes, this might be a little hard for you guys to see, but all of this comes in this little, nice little work area. Now it's pretty tight. So what we have to do is we gotta get this down through the bus. And so I've drilled these two little holes. And now you might say, hmm, that seems pretty easy. You just drill some holes in the bus. Well, for those of you who are starting to build your bus and you have all these great plans of where things are going to go, your bus is not as forgiving as you might think. And you have to adapt. So those holes, these right here, these are our relay boxes. So in our bus, everything in our bus is controlled by these. They are extremely expensive and you don't want them to go bad, ever. You want to protect these at all costs. So, 
this right here, this pillar marks the window. We have 18 inches and our bathroom wall lands right about here. And when I go up in here, you can see our two screw holes right here. Now I made sure not to screw into this. I used shallow screws and more glue, but there's our two holes. Now you're probably thinking if you look back, why didn't I get away from our PEX water lines? Well, there's a bracket right here that holds this box. So I can't go forward. I tried drilling a pilot hole there, but that's too close to the two by four. And I can't go back because then I'd be in the shower. So this is the only shot we had. So when you're planning your bus, think about everything. Now I drilled these two holes. We're going to put in this three quarter uh, LFMC. L I keep getting the acronym wrong. L LFMC, I forget. We're putting this in those two holes. We're gonna armor those six cables. We're going to go from right there in the bus and we're going to go choop, choop, choop and our panel and everything is gonna be mounted on here. These two guys, we have one more that needs to be armored. We've got this run here that's got one circuit in it. And then on this side of the other side of the bus, we've got this guy. So this guy comes out of here and he's gonna go right through that wall. And this guy has two circuits. This is for the outlets on that side of the bus. And this is our 20 amp for our cooktop. And also our refrigerator. So we're plugging and chugging here, trying to get all the electrical ran, shielded, protected, tucked out of the way, looking nice. Keep working. So we've been working on this bay. We've got our walls in. We had our floor pulled out. We put down some nice new carpet. We have all of our conduit here and we have two on the other side that are gonna come through. So these are our two 15 amps. One of these carries our, our two 20 amp circuit, circuits from the air conditioning. And then the other two are just, or the other one here is four small 15 amp circuits. So one of the things is we're trying to figure out where to put all of this stuff in the best spot we kind of agreed that the spot up in the front, we really want to keep is kind of like a storage area and maybe a play area for the kids to just kind of go down in under the bus. Um, we'll probably end up putting a hatch, something to that effect, uh, right in this area. But, um, this bay is kind of going to be storage. Um, one of the things I did is I measured our easy up, which is kind of one of the biggest things we have to put in there and, uh, made sure that our walls, um, that we could accommodate that. The other thing that we need to put in here is this is where our breaker and our uh, inverter and load uh, 50 amp uh, 50 amp main circuit is going to go. So it kind of needs to be out of the way. I want to make sure that I'm not hitting it with anything, etc. Um, so we're going to kind of put it kind of high and hopefully keep that out of the way. And all of these conduits should be able to reach and the two on the other side should be able to fit right in there. And that way it's kind of out away from the kids. That way they're not playing with it. And it's in our storage area. It's not next to our water uh, in case that's an issue. So this kind of is the only place that I really want to put it. On the other side is the generator, uh, which unfortunately is going to have a diesel tank and a battery. So I don't necessarily want to put it in there either. So, um, Right now I'm going to apply some glue to this wall. So we've got some indoor outdoor carpet adhesive. That stuff is insanely sticky and it's also kind of difficult to work with. So uh, we've got like a notch trowel and we trowel it on the walls um, and go from there. We've got 80 feet of black carpet and it is about hundred degrees outside. So working with this stuff, it is hot. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and cut that up. We need 35 inches high from the walls and we've got five feet, five feet and 66 inches. So it comes out to roughly about 16 feet of carpet, but we're gonna cut that in half. And the other part of that is gonna go on this wall and tucked in on this wall. So let's get to that. Derek's man cave. You enjoying your Father's Day? The best Father's Day ever. Really? Well, it was until you guys started fighting. You know mommy's making a fight. Uh, that's fine. Everybody can know that you and your brother fight. No! Mommy's making a fight. Alright, so we just got finished. We backed the truck up to the bus and we used our handy dandy window here. We brought in a brand new dishwasher. Still have to hook it up, make sure it's properly secured, leveled, etc. Um, I installed an outlet underneath here. So there's our outlet and we have our little hole for our drain and our water supply. So I just need to wire up the plug and hook up the drain, hook up the power supply. And we'll start working on the drain for the sink. Burning the midnight oil over here. Gotta get it done.